The last piece of art I made, I traced from an original. And now I need to know if I can turn it into something I could call wholly my own, fully original. You ready to figure this out with me? Recently, I encouraged you to steal the inspiration for your next painting, a la Austin Cleon. Comments here suggested a ton of gray area on the topic. And some even implied that my art of tracing origins could never be called my own or sold. Today, I'm finishing what I started and along the way, showing you what type of decisions need to be made in order to turn a steal into an original. All right, here is where we started, friends. This is the page that I copied from, traced. I'm gonna put that to the side. I don't wanna see that anymore. And that's part of uh, the process of, you know, taking your inspiration and really starting to innovate is stepping away from that inspiration piece, that trace, whatever it might be, and to start to step into your own creativity with the piece as it stands now. So what I've done, a couple of things that have been inspiring me lately that I'm going to infuse into this piece. Number one, the peonies that are currently in my garden. This one's a little like on its way out, but it doesn't matter. I have got the state flower Pennsylvania here. Nobody report me for picking it. Um, this is, oh my gosh, mountain laurel. That's what it's called. So the other thing that has been inspiring me lately. This is Sarah Renee Clark's Color Cube, one of them. Uh, ever since our collaboration, I've had these on my walls and this side of the box is inspiring me to no end. Love, love, love this. I love the idea of mingling. And I'm walking you through, friends. This is what I'm doing here. I am walking you through my thought process with how I am going to approach this piece to make it mine. So I am loving the botanical start. I will, I have always been and will forever be inspired by vintage botanical illustrations, but I love this color blocking, the graphic quality of this. And then the idea of bringing in some like fashion sketch style, illustrative gestural stuff on top. So let's just see how it goes. You're sitting here painting along with me, friends. I'm so glad you're here. If you're already having a good time, go ahead and give this video a boop. Uh, and just, you know, it helps my channel. It helps other people find this beautifully crazy space so they can paint along with us too. So thank you so much. All right, I might need some acrylic, so I'm gonna grab it. I love my acrylic wash, been using it a lot lately. And friends, I will say, you're gonna wanna watch the first video of this. It, I'm gonna link it below. You're gonna see the pop-up on the screen. Uh, I would definitely watch that one first. You know, pause this and open the other one in a new window. All right, all right, all right. So let's get into it. I've got my first layers here. I am feeling strongly that I want to get some of this color blocking in. So I'm gonna get some acrylic out. Yes, I'm pouring that right on my backdrop. Don't judge me. This is the reason I developed my double walled paint pot, friends, because I'm always getting going between acrylic and watercolor, always. So I need those rinsing areas. Anywho, I digress. Just thinking about this color blocking idea and getting in I'm not making like super graphic squares, at least not yet. I, I need to get a couple of these on here to see how I feel about life. And it's my way of saying, you gotta like ease your way into an experimental brushstroke or a tentative uh, idea that you have for a painting. Ease yourself into it and allow yourself the margin to redirect and make changes. I'm gonna get some peach in here, I'm feeling like. Yeah, and I'm going right over these raspberries because I'm almost thinking down the road, I may very well um, sketch those back in in that gestural style I was mentioning, knowing full well that I am going to be picking up some of the color underneath, that's okay. And get back to the blue, I liked that blue. Pull down some of that acrylic. Ooh, look at that, look at that, that's lovely. So my squares aren't super dupes square, 
and I'm okay with that. I wanna go down here and get some of that acrylic going. And my thought process here is to give myself a more stable place to add more like ink or pen on top of later. And the acrylic will, will give me a more opaque kind of stable area to do that. All right, another square, another square. I think it's important for us to realize that the first layers of, the, of a painting are absolutely in no way an indicator of where the painting will land. Like in no way. They are an indicator of a beginning. They are an indicator of that particular moment and your mood in those few seconds, minutes, right? But are absolutely not an indicator. I was getting some comments on the original video um, kind of with the, um, and I don't say this meanly, but with the assumption that this was my painting and that maybe I would add a layer of just like pen or something and call it my own. Mm -mm. No, not just with a piece that starts as a trace, but with any piece of art. And I think this is helpful to know in your journey. Those first, say, 30 minutes even of brushstrokes and intention and of struggle that, that happen with a, a piece of paper, brush, and paint, those are just like, you know, just before the sun's gonna come out and just, you, you know, com completely cover you with joyful warmth in your backyard. There's sometimes this wind and there's sometimes, who knows, maybe even a little sprinkle from the sky. That, the, the wind and the sprinkle, that's those first moments with your painting. They're chaotic. You don't know what's going to happen next. It could completely storm or it could just, you could see a rainbow and the sun comes out and it's glorious for the next three hours, right? So that's my creative metaphor for those first initial strokes, right? This first layer of the painting um, took me about in real time of 15 minutes. And those 15 minutes were just pure exploration and pure just like getting thoughts down on paper, but again, in no way indicating where things were going to be, where things were going to land. And the reason I'm saying that, friends, is because we often, and I do it too, even as a professional painter that's been doing this for decades, I get trapped in the thinking that that first half hour is like a predictor for something significant in the lifespan of my artwork. And friends, it is not. That is where I'll stop. All right, for right now, I'm gonna stop the blocking because I feel like I need some time to make decisions about some other parts of this piece. I'm gonna grab one of my markers. I believe this is a Kiritake marker that's kind of modeled after like a bamboo. And I'm going to start, I kind of do want to define this butterfly and I'll have to decide if it makes it too similar to the inspiration piece. And who knows, I might end up just painting right over it. I don't know, but I'm gonna start doing that. I did not sketch prior to this. I just kind of had a roadmap in my head of the other inspirational elements that I wanted to use. That's about as much planning as this girl does at any moment. I was reading, um, listening to, I'm an audible girl, Elizabeth Gilbert's Big Magic. I could have swore, friends, that I had read that book. I own that book like a physical copy, but I have learned it. I much prefer to listen to books than to actually physically read them. And so I was like, you know what? I need to reread or re-listen to Big Magic. And been listening to it and I'm thinking I don't think I ever actually read it. It was a gift many years ago. I don't think I ever read it. And something that she talks about and I actually have plans to go deep on this idea in an upcoming video. You'll have to let me know what you think. She talks about this idea of being a half-assed creative. Excuse the language. And I'm going to try in my humble way to summarize this idea. And it ties back to my own habit of of not planning a lot, something that I am just known for, and that I've actually felt a lot of guilt for over the years. And she talks about be a really disciplined half-asser because, and it's in the context of perfectionism, because perfectionism, she calls it basically just a dressed up bougie form of fear. 
<laughs> and when I listened to that, I was like, what? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I had never heard um, perfectionism described that way. I mean, I've been telling folks for years to throw away perfectionism, but she was able to put it into a frame of experience that I have never been able to verbalize before. And it was just lovely. And so this approach that I'm, I'm with here on this painting, I am half-assing the planning of it by design because I know that I can get stuck there. And I know that my crutch sometimes of over planning certain aspects of a painting, more so in my past life, I was much more of a planner. I've learned better since, that that can kind of get me stuck in the fearfulness of planning so easily. And so I diligently paint, I diligently and consistently sit down, even when I don't feel like it, and get to the making of the thing. But I choose to half-ass parts of, many parts of the process at times. And this is not a negative thing in this context. This is, this is creative self-preservation, friends. Creative self-preservation. Kind of feel like I wanna block out this whole area. So this is acrylic gouache by Holbein. I love the texture of it. It's fantabulous. I'm going in with my three quarter inch dagger and I am going to just kind of block out this whole area for something exciting. Maybe, hopefully, cutting off some of that leaf. I'm just speaking life and success into my intentions here. Love that. Going around the leaf. So remember, we're here, we're experimenting, we're trying to take what started as a blatant trace and turn it into something that feels very much my own. Can we do it? Can we prove Austin Cleon's theory intact? That there are no new great ideas, that we're all just out here gathering parts, bits, pieces, that the wind has blown creatively into our existence that once belonged to someone else, can we evolve them into something that is our own, that is filled up, riddled with our own experience, our own moments of struggle, our own proclivities for color, and so on and so on. Can it be done? Or is it just still a plain old ripoff? What do you think? Let us know in comments so far what you're seeing of the piece and how I'm evolving it. Do you think I'm still in the ripoff stage? Let me know. Have I crossed that threshold yet? Let me know. Oh, and by the way, y'all, we're in very much still the ugly face. So stick around though, because I feel I feel like I'm gonna be able to, to make it work. I do, I do, I do. I do feel like I'm gonna be able to make it work. I'm going to continue painting here, and while I do, let's talk about the 30% rule. You might have heard of it. If you can change a piece of artwork at least 30%, then it's yours. It's original now. And actually, it's not true. So we can't take this idea lightly, this tracing idea, to take some of the stress off of ourselves in this creative journey. We have to be serious about making sure we're just not ripping someone's idea off. Kind of like what Austin Kleon calls good theft versus bad theft. I love this. Good theft's going to honor the original idea, not degrade it. Good theft is going to study and build upon the original idea. It's not just going to skim and steal way too much. And here's the one that I put into practice today. Steal from many, not just one. So yes, I started with the tracing from the Botanical Bible, but I just skimmed the surface with that one and quickly moved on to bring in more inspiration. Botanical pen and ink illustration that was completely of my own hands to bring in color inspiration from Sarah's color cubes and more. And trust me, friends, I get it. Using this word steal or theft it's very triggering, and I'm sure that was by design with the author. So let's try to take those words with a grain of salt and know that they're for marketing buzz. Because really what this is a conversation about is making sure that your creative fires stay lit for as long 
and as often as possible. And all of us need help with that. And so how do you feel, friends? Do you think at this point that my painting is an original? Have I transformed it enough? Head to comments and let us know. And remember, no answer is wrong. This is all about opinions and let's get the conversation started. And let's also get this started. A boop on this video would be awesome because it really helps out my channel and helps more people find the fun here. I want you to try this exercise. I think it'll be really good for your creative soul. A couple of things though that we need to think about when we're trying to transform something we've traced and make it a lot more original. You wanna pay attention to the spirit of the piece. If it's just looking like the original that you traced from, it's not evolved enough yet. The colors are too similar. The composition is too similar. Ask yourself the question, if I showed these two pieces to 10 people, would they know that I copied? Or would they know that I was inspired by the original piece? Number two, be prepared to use the phrase inspired by whenever you show the work or even if you are going to show the work in a gallery or sell it, use the inspiration as part of the title even. So for example, I might title my piece something along the lines of Botanical Bible Rewind. Okay, that was weak. Titling things has never been my strong suit, but you get my point. It's a way of making like an obvious footnote as if you were writing a paper and revealing your sources. Number three, this one makes things easy and a lot more clear. Go mixed media, just like I did. I really changed the spirit of this piece because I had acrylic and neons and all sorts of stuff going on here, right? And number four, know that if it's still not sitting well in your gut, just chalk it up to be a really fun practice piece and keep it to yourself. All right, I gotta know, how do you think I did? I honestly would feel comfortable presenting this work as my own. And I really want to hear, though, if you disagree. I definitely would include something in the title or in the description if I, say, post it on Instagram. But yeah, I've completely changed the mood, the vibe, the style, the color palette, and even the composition. You might have considered tracing because maybe your composition skills were feeling a little lackluster. And if that's the case, you're definitely going to want to watch this video next. I'll see you over there. And until next time, so much happy painting, tracing, copying, stealing, whatever you want to call it, just make the art.